Um, hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, it's July 10th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Dread Pirate Higgs, on the show with us today. And uh, hello. Uh, Our guests today are the Wombat. And that's it for today. I mean, last week we were really crowded. And this week we have three. But that's the way it goes. It's Uh, all law of averages. That's right. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism and the sciences and conversely we'll also talk about religion religious faiths gods holy books and superstition and if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town while you're just not here in knoxville in the middle of the bible belt we have a group of over a thousand of us and we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break dread what's our topic today well i i thought we might dive into uh whether or not ignorance is bliss. Is that a myth? Uh, does it have some Ooh. practical advantages? And, uh, you know, when it's tied together with its corollary, which is uh, ignorance is bliss, twere wiser, or twere, twere foolish to be wise. Um, maybe the, the two of those work together in some synergistic way. So, uh, but before we get into that, uh, I wouldn't mind starting off with a little benediction for you all. Okay. All right. Hail Marinara, full of spice, the flying spaghetti monster is filled with thee. Tasty art thou among sauces, and blessed is the fruit of thy jar, tomatoes, although fools believe they are vegetables. Holy Marinara, chief amongst toppings, save a plate for us now, and at about six o'clock when dinner is served, if you would be so kind. Ramen. Ramen. Gotta make sure I get that right. <laughs> so, how is everyone today? Not too bad. I, how, how have you been for this last week? Who's Who talking well? to me? Everyone? Yes. We're back. all doing good. Hey, I'm doing really good. I got um, a lot of stuff at work done. We had a long holiday. Uh, we came back, you know, midweek to start up work again. And I feel like we did two weeks worth of work in three days. And I always feel really good when things are very productive and moving well. We had a lot of, I, I managed like seven laboratories at our job. We have like 46 different instruments. Some of them break, some of them don't, I mean, uh, have like bad standards. Some of them are out of control. We got everything back up and running again. And if not, we got the parts ready to get them fixed for next week. So I'm really, I'm actually excited to get back to work and, and continue to down the, 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 the work that we did from the last you know, half week that we we're on. I always feel really motivated and stuff like that. That's cool. that's how I feel right now. Really. How, like how's your uh, disc golf? Any more of that going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. To the point where I'm getting really bad calluses on my feet, so I have to actually like rest <laughs> up. Really? Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So you got to get the uh, the grinder on there. I go out in Crocs now when I play. I go out and play in Crocs. Get that comfort feel. Ah, oh, perfect. How about you, Larry? Well, I haven't been riding much the. Uh my motorcycle is still under wraps out there because of all the rain we've been yeah. having this week oh it's yeah like i wonder if we're turning into a new tropical area yeah with, uh, you know, the monsoons and stuff with the global change but uh, i have been playing a lot of my quest too playing some yeah. computer games and of course working larry uh, let me throw yeah. something out at you why not sure. get a motorcycle simulator for your quest and then you get I all have the benefits into it i okay. have not overlooked that possibility i just haven't found one yet all right all right yeah all right. So, um, well, I haven't, I haven't been doing too much. I I've been out to the shop uh, a couple of times and I got, um, uh, I got a whole bunch of slabs of, uh, birch wood Ooh. from a, from a big tree. So some of it's like, you know, two feet across. So, uh, so I've been processing all that so I can get some wood turning projects on the go. But, uh, other than that, just still waiting to get back to work, but, um, you know, on that, uh, not knowing when uh, any work is coming, uh, you know, I, I wonder if that is bliss. Mm, not knowing, I like know, it. The I ignorance like it. of when I work next uh, is is actually blissful. I actually think it's quite quite stressful. Now, Dred, I got yeah. a quick question. 
when yeah. you asked for the birchwood, were you doing it in your pirate accent? And were you actually able to verify that it was the birchwood? Because maybe you were trying to ask for the best wood and in the pirate accent, they got it mixed up. And they're just like, oh, he's asking for the best wood. Give us yeah. some time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I got the best of the birchwood, I think. Nice, nice. Best birchwood, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what, do you what do you think, Ty? Like, is ignorance bliss? Are there I circumstances where you think that that is an appropriate stance? Ignorance has benefits, but I also think like ignorance is ubiquitous and there's no real escape from it because the more you learn, as I think we all are aware, the more we realize that there's what far greater boundaries of ignorance around every kernel of knowledge that we have. And the more resolute that knowledge is, the deeper the ignorance around it becomes. And so as we learn in science and as we learn in interactions with people and every sort of phenomenon we study, we realize that the expanse of, you, of ignorance is huge. And there's some benefit that comes with it because it'd be maddening to try to take it all at once. However, I feel like the real danger that comes with ignorance is that willful ignorance is harmful and dangerous. And I okay. find that when we are aware that there is a point of ignorance, but choose to ignore it, and pretend that's knowledge, that's when we have a problem. And so what I prefer is if we recognize that ignorance isn't necessarily a bad thing, that it does have some inherent benefits and in that it points out to places where we need to take our knowledge to, but that we also don't try to confuse it or conflate it with knowledge itself, because we mm. need to recognize when we don't know something for when we don't know something. Right. That's my thought. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. Mm. But isn't it often the case um, where people are not so much willfully ignorant, but that their, um, their worldview uh, shields them essentially from mm. uh, acquiring new knowledge and yeah. then becoming aware of the, that greater ignorance. Yeah, and I do find that that is the case. But also, here's my other throw out. That worldview or that fostering that, in, in that enables that worldview plays on the human condition. Mm -hmm. And the human condition is one that is afraid of change, right? And also one that's afraid of recognizing when there's culpability on their part that they've made a mistake or an error. Like ego is this is and and confidence work hand in hand to give an assurance that what they're doing is the correct thing and that they shouldn't mm -hmm. change course. And you can be raised in an environment that fosters that attitude but it's really playing on the human condition. And I feel like if you were to appreciate ignorance for what it actually is, I don't mm -hmm. know for the value of that statement and, and realize that confidence isn't necessarily on your side in most cases. And in fact, it's ignorance and, and doubt that is on your side. Even if you were to move in an environment that was fostering that sort of attitude, you'd, you would reject it because you have an appreciation for what I think is a better model to determine true things from false things. That would be my point. Mm -hmm. I do think that there's a worldview that supports it, but I think it plays on the human condition and we can evolve in one lifetime or at least through like interaction with people to have a higher standard of, of thought. Right. What do you think, Larry? Well, I think, first of all, that we need to um, define the word in ignorance. Uh, ignorance is not stupidity. It's lack yeah. of information. Right. So um, I'm thinking that a person who was ignorant of the American political system might be happy <laughs> right about now, but if they're, uh, if they're any kind of uh, knowledgeable about what's going on as far as the Supreme Court and the political parties and the conservatives versus the liberals, then they may not be very happy right now. Hey, interesting. Uh, welcome, John Richards, from across the puddle. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit flustered, I suppose. <laughs> oh, what's up? Well, no, nothing serious. No, it's just that I've had. I mean, your hair looks great. Yeah, <laughs> the accent's checking in. Everything's good. You're firing on all levels. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't really want to hear about this. I've got a large family, and I'm the driver, and right. I've been ferrying people backwards and forwards. And there's one in hospital still, and so she's recovering. But uh, you know, it's, I'm a bit flustered <laughs> that's why that's why i'm late so there you go i'm here now though what are we talking about well we're we're talking about whether or not ignorance is bliss mm. and uh and of course the larger saying is uh ignorance is bliss toward it foolish to be wise and so uh ty had some interesting thoughts on, on uh 
on how we should recognize ignorance uh, as our friend, essentially, because it guides us towards uh, expanding our, our universe of knowledge. Um, and uh, yeah, so what, what, what might your thoughts be on that? Do you think sure. uh, it's a, a myth or it actually has value? It's an interesting saying, isn't it? And I've definitely got thoughts on it. I disagree with it on principle because let's say you're, you're in a jungle and there's a snake. Mm. Wouldn't it be better to have knowledge about that snake, whether it's going to bite you with a poisonous you know, toxin that could lead to your death or alternatively, whether you might be able to skin it and barbecue it and enjoy it for, for your right. meal. So I, I think it's a bad saying. I don't think ignorance is ever bliss. I think knowledge is bliss and mm. ignorance is, is a threat, a danger, a risk. Mm. Uh, but I, I picked up on what uh, Larry was saying because there's no shame in ignorance. I mean, I, I don't know very much about, um, what shall I say, uh, Russian... Uh, Russian ornithology, <laughs> the birds of Russia, you know, mm. and it's, it's not, it's not shameful because, you know, I have no experience of the birds of Russia and I, I had no, no motive to find out about the birds of Russia. They don't impinge upon my consciousness at all. So uh, it, it's not the same as stupidity. Stupidity is willful ignorance. It's, it's where you've been you've had an opportunity to learn something which could benefit you and you've turned it down mm. and, and so i i think that um there's no shame in ignorance unless you've chosen it <laughs> right ty you had your hand up yeah i feel like ignorance is a lot like a nail right and it's really what you do with it that determines how dangerous it could be because you can lay them all on your carpet floor in front of your bed and walk over them every day and that's a terrible use of ignorance but you could also use it in a really good way to like build a home or like direct yourself to make something very useful that you can build like a good foundation of knowledge on top of. And it's all about the use of it. And it's one of those things where it's not so much a shameful thing to own a nail or a shameful thing to have a nail or to look at a nail, but it's a useful thing to recognize a nail for what a nail is and what its potential could be used for. And I feel like what we fail to do a lot of times is recognize that it's okay to be ignorant of things. In fact, you should admit when you are, because that gives you the opportunity to build knowledge on top of that or use mm -hmm. it in the right way. What do you there's think? A, there's an interesting thing. You might uh, all have heard of the uh, Dunning-Kruger effect. And, uh, you know, certainly ignorance plays a huge role in that, in that a person is unaware of the degree to which they're ignorant of a, of a subject. And yet... Mm -hmm profess a great deal of knowledge mm. um so uh, in that case is that willful ignorance or is that just you know is that stupidity is that willful ignorance what what, what do you think um uh give it up ty what, what do you think i think it's a combination of all three of those things i would think it there's a there's a play of some willful ignorance in there because again the human condition doesn't want to admit when they're wrong there's some confidence in there as well and we know also that there's the idea of things can be a lot more complicated under the title or the, the cover, but you can, you can say, hey, I read a Wikipedia article on rocket science and now I feel like I know it. I feel like I know it. it's like you haven't given yourself the appreciation to know all the nuances of it. And that's where you, you I have a saying in our lab, you haven't fixed something until you purposely broke it and put it back together again. And, and it's a lot of Perfect. people who haven't gone through that to... to to fix it larry i'm sorry go for it yeah go ahead larry um no i was just, just going to talk about uh the word stupidity or stupid uh to me it's not willful ignorance uh willful ignorance, willful ignorance can be just a religious concept no matter what uh your iq is you can be a very smart person but then be willfully ignorant of the way like evolution works right. because you just don't want to know you don't want to get there you don't want to go there because it may mm. shake your faith Exactly. To me, the word stupidity, it means low IQ, like uh, 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 the technical or um, psychological word moron or idiot has certain uh, 
technical definitions behind it to decide uh, depending on where your iq lies mm -hmm. and to me if a person has a very low iq they are in, by definition stupid so it lays on that yeah kind of, and, and uh, that curve. actually that number is 60 if if or 100 stupid. is the average <laughs> iq uh, 60 below 60 uh you need help on a daily basis to um you know do carry on normal life yeah, it's like activities that, right that doctor in uh Forrest Gump when he held up the chart and said, your son's right here <laughs> on the chart. <laughs> That's right. you know, he wasn't talking about willful ignorance. So. Stupid is as stupid does. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Any thoughts on that, uh, John? Well, I think it's, this is tied up with the wish for certainty, isn't it? Mm. Because doubt is scary. Let's yes. face it. If, if, you, if you don't know the answer to mysteries, then you're in a risky position compared to if you have that knowledge and so we all have a sort of inbuilt an innate wish for certainty and sometimes we we so desire certainty that we we apportion it to <laughs> situations where certainty is actually not available but it gives us comfort if we claim that we're certain about something because we've we've put behind us the the possibility that it's a risky situation. Mm. So I, I think if you if you get to a stage where your desire for certainty is so great you become dogmatic mm. about about knowledge which you don't really have, then well, we see too much of that. <laughs> right. There's a lot of that about. Yeah. Ty, uh, you had your hand up. I think John hits it right on the head. The whole pursuit of knowledge is to crush <laughs> uncertainty. And uncertainty comes with a lot of fear, unscare, risk, a whole bunch of stuff that comes with it. And the problem is, is knowledge is very difficult, difficult to ascertain. And so we take shortcuts. It's our human condition to want to try to find analogies and, and quicker ways to, to resolve pain, right? Or, uh, or harm or risk. And we will replace knowledge with confidence or we'll replace knowledge with comfort or we'll replace knowledge with uh, certainty on very weak foundations or very poor epistemologies because mm -hmm. it makes us feel as if we've quashed uh, or squashed uh, uncertainty. But the yeah, fact yeah. of the matter is, it's not a good replacement. Knowledge is really best suited for knowledge. There's really no mm. other higher standard than that. It's well, just, fine. it's just a very obscure thing. Yeah, go for it. Go, go ahead, Larry. I was just going to say um, there was. I'm just looking up the quote. Uh, certainty is overrated. Who said that? Jesus. Mm. <laughs> I was thinking it was. Uh, um, Christopher Hitchens or uh, oh, okay. Dawkins, something like yeah. that. Could have been. Uh, but uh, Sarah B. Johnson, uh, Sarah B. Anderson, apparently has, has said it several times. So the thing about it is you can be certain, totally certain about things. As a matter of fact, you're, a lot of people are very convinced, very totally um, certain that their God is real. And I'm mm -hmm. talking about different people and different religions. Think, think of the... Uh, the most religious person you can in Christianity, the most pious person you can. Now think of that person in Judaism, mm -hmm. that person in Hinduism, that person in 10,000 other religions, mm -hmm. all of them are totally certain that what they believe is true and they all contradict each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they can't be, but certainty is there. Right. And the thing on top of that, just adding is like, not only are they certain, but they're all using the same method to reach their certainty. They're all right. saying faith. my personal experience, my faith, that my mm -hmm. holy book. It's like, well, mm -hmm. you can't all be correct if you're all using the same method. And what does that say about your method? You know, I, I, I was thinking about this as well, is that, and this is where BS comes in. Because, you know, if, if ignorance is bliss, uh, BS can prevail, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you know, you don't discern mm -hmm. between the potential for a thing to be true or not true, because you're blissfully unaware of, mm -hmm. or don't have a, an appropriate methodology for determining it, or, or applying that methodology to determining what mm -hmm. somebody says is true or not. 
And um, I mean, that could be certainly said for, I mean, the average uh, pastor or priest in a church may be devout in what he says with respect to his beliefs, but then you may have evangelicals like Peter Popoff or uh, televangelists who are really slinging BS. Mm. And the unfortunate thing is, is that their audiences are almost virtually the same in, in terms of this uh, willful or, or this ignorance of his bliss thing. So Ty, you had your up? Go on in, John, or I, I feel I go ahead, okay. Ty, and then uh, yeah. and then John next. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, I do feel like there is ignorance, which is just you know the base level nail. You can use it for anything you want. You have um, willful ignorance, which is hey, I don't care if this nail is bad for me. It makes me comfortable to use it. But that puts you into position where, as Dread Pirate was pointing out, where you become a could potentially become a victim to predatory ignorance. Right. which is wielded by people who are aware of the BS, but know that there's a profit or a benefit in exchanging it with people who are willfully ignorant to get some sort of power or money or attention or something like that. And I yeah, say that control. ignorance is malicious, that's predatory, but you have an opportunity if you're listening to this or if you're out in the world to not be a subject to that kind of treatment by just simply higher raising your standard for for knowledge or and appreciating it more and being able to do the work necessary to to realize that uncertainty even with knowledge is an okay thing and uncertainty mm. while scary and uncomfortable is informative and is still useful yeah go ahead uh, john well i can't oh, help I'm unmuted. About the the child who's unable to sleep at night because of the thunder you know and so there's a question what is that thunder mummy it's scary you know mm -hmm. and so this is where we need to know the dis di the difference between an answer mm -hmm. and a response right ah, you almost got america the difference between an answer and an explanation but yeah i hear what you're saying response <laughs> yeah, and explanation is the same thing in yeah. england so it's all good yeah, yeah. so well, was, i see there's response. someone on the phone is who is hello that's me oh hi how are you <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Reason. For the listening audience, <laughs> can you give us your name? A within reason. That's my right. Right. Yeah, you've been on here before a couple of weeks ago, I think. Welcome, right? welcome, welcome. Or was it last week? Thanks. Yes, I think yeah. so. So uh, I don't know if you caught what the topic is, but we're talking about uh, whether or not ignorance is bliss, and uh, and if uh, I if, you've got a cup, if you have some thoughts on that. Well, I, I did. Um, I just, it just reminds me of um, something that I've probably heard uh, Larry <laughs> mention. Um, I've probably seen it on his website, the Digital Free Thought website. I've probably seen it on our Facebook groups as well, um, the APS Facebook groups that, um, you know, it's the biggest, I, I think it was, um, Oh, I can't think of the British guy's name that uh, like one of the four Richard Dawkins. Christopher Hitchens or Richard Dawkins. Dawkins thank you, Larry. Huh? Uh, he was saying that, um, you know, it's like a, the, the biggest uh, show business. Um, somebody help me out here. What yeah, was the greatest that? show on earth, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Truly. Yeah. That's interesting. And, you know, when I was talking about uh, televangelists and, and, uh, and, you know, priests who truly believe, it's interesting that uh, the audience of one may chide and, and balk at the, uh, the ignorance of the other group, mm -hmm. not realizing that they're just as vulnerable, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the other regards the other with a certain amount of disdain. How could you fall for that kind of thing? You know, is one is saying to the other, but when they have their you know, own they're, they're both <laughs> they're both unexplored ignorance. Yes, yep. there's, uh, unexplored ignorance. <laughs> there's a really terrible human condition aspect that's biologically rooted <laughs> in that the more someone is exposed to something, the more they become desensitized to it, and mm. that applies to both you know harms that could occur in nature or even the smell of someone's own farts. And I feel yeah. like what we're dealing with right mm. now is like the smell, like 
BS and ignorance in that capacity is very much in the similar sense of like someone smelling their own fart to the point where they can't recognize their own malfunctions in life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That it's not yeah. a big deal anymore. They, yeah, they don't realize if you uh, smelt it, you dealt it. That, yeah. that kind of thing. What, what are you trying to say there, Dred? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. I wanted to finish. Uh, sorry, sorry, I wanted. Or John, I wanted to finish uh, my distinction between answer and response because yeah. if you, I mean, both can be useful because early man didn't know actually what did cause thunder. We do now, mm -hmm. but but to give the the frightened child who can't sleep a response, you know, like it's Thor hammering in the sky solved the problem the child could then think mummy knows what is this noise and I'll, I'll be able to sleep now now that she's explained it to me but the answer is something quite different right. from the real answer from that yeah. response and and just a disambiguation from that uh i like the idea that um your kid could get an answer which is similar to like a response, which is sort of like a dismissive way of like brushing over a more complex situation. But what we really like in science is explanations to explain things. And those are descriptions of a system or a methodology that caused some sort of phenomenon that we can observe and we can test the explanation to find the best explanation because maybe even the first one wasn't the best one we can work with. And yeah. it's the weird thing about explanations is that they're never fully comprehensive because they tend to introduce new concepts and new systems with them that we can better understand, which re which causes us to re-examine the explanation that we have and constantly find new ideas. So yeah, we may know how thunder works, but now we know how to cause thunder inside copper wires in a, in a sense, mm. or lightning, my bad. And we can use, I can, I can go to a gift shop and buy like a little container thing that has a little uh, lightning bolt sort of thing if I touch it, because we understand that phenomenon well enough that we can itemize it and commodify it. And mm -hmm. maybe there's other aspects that we can cause lightning in, in the future and, and stuff like that. I just feel like that's a demonstration of us mastering an explanation um, and, and not just working with a response or an answer. Right, of course. And, yeah. you know, we, we tend to chase rabbits. Um, you know, when, when something catches our attention, we tend to run with it. And if we're in the pursuit of knowledge, uh, that, of course, has great benefit. And if we're in pursuit of um you know less <laughs> you know less <laughs> things like a religion or whatever yeah. again we we cling to those things you know yeah. we're very well, fond of our beliefs right? yeah we just get explanations rather than uh understandings yeah because you can't understand how god made the universe or god made miracles happen it just yeah. You, you feel like you understand it, but you, you really don't understand yeah. it. Anyway, we're at the bottom of the hour, and we need yeah, to go so we'll, for a break real quick. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll wait. Uh, John, you'll be first up uh, when we come back. Okay. <laughs> okay, stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk just for a second about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, and that's over 20 years ago. We have over 1,000 members, and we're a week, we have weekly in-person meetings at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables, or if it's pretty weather, outside on the deck. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetings. If you'd like to join us there, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or at letschatse at gmail.com. You can find us online also just by searching for Knoxville Atheists. Uh, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for a uh, group in your town. Don't find one. Start one. Uh, and uh, Dred, where do you want to pick up? Well, you know, I, I was just curious. Uh, <clears throat> does the pizzeria you guys meet at have a basement? Uh, probably. We don't know, but they have an upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was crude. I my apologies. But I don't uh, get it. <laughs> well, we were talking about um, whether or not ignorance is uh, bliss, and I suppose 
not knowing whether or not the pizzeria has a basement is, you know, ties into that. But uh, John, you had some comments that you wanted to uh, to make with respect to that. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to expand because uh, I was to, we were talking about answers and responses, and then Ty brought in explanations. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to try and define these a bit more tightly. <clears throat> I think that a response is just something that follows whatever the question was. It doesn't actually have any connection to it necessarily. You know, it's, it could be, um, what's the expression? A non sequitur. Mm. Right. And right. whereas an answer does have some bearing to the question. I mean, it, it's like four is the answer to two plus two. Right. But an explanation goes a bit further because right. that provides some sort of mechanism yes. that yes. describes how yes. the, the answer is arrived at. Right. So and how two plus two becomes four. Why yes. is that okay? Yes. Prove it. Yes. Well, yes, indeed. Well, one yeah. thing we need to keep in mind is a response is just a response. I mean, five is a response to yes. what is two but two yeah. plus two. It's right. the wrong response, but it's still a response. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, within reason, you you had some thoughts that you wanted to share. Are you there? Silent. Hello. There you oh, are. hello again. Hey. <laughs> I um. Hi. I I just I've you know I experienced uh, the personal um, um, proclaimments of 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 you know people of religion and you know. All, we all do on a daily basis mm. and uh, it just it's like what you know I I cannot I just have to go along I just you know in my day-to-day -day life um, it's uh, but you know in my mind I'm thinking how much do you believe of that you know I mean it's just it's got to be this deep indoctrination of someone that just it's not it's way out of the comfort zone if they're going to question mm -hmm. their their mind and their thinking and their beliefs so i don't know where i was going with that <laughs> <laughs> well mm -hmm. you, you had mentioned you know about snake oil and, and people selling snake oil uh willfully oh absolutely who was that dawkins uh, right larry yeah. I guess so. Um, but was it Barnum said it pretty much? A fool, yeah. Who had the circus? A fool, yeah, a fool, a fool born, born every, every second, minute. Yeah, yeah. every minute. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, this it's, is what... it's it's uh, willingness to believe stuff that you're told without proper examination. That's faith in yeah. a nutshell. Yeah. Well, they're children and they're babies, and so mm -hmm. yeah. they have no There's... choice. It's almost like a cult. Yeah, it is a cult. You know, you, you think about a movie, right? And there's a thing of, you know, the suspension of disbelief. Uh, so we go walk into a, a movie, you know, Superman or something like that. And we know that humans can't fly. And we know that Harry Potter you know, or Harry Potter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so there's a degree to which we willingly uh, suspend our disbelief in order to find entertainment in things that can't possibly uh, be true in the real world but um, you know it would certainly seem the case that the the suspension of disbelief is also uh, it, it can be indoctrinated you know in the case of people who you know believe in very strange claims without any justified evidence for them um, mm -hmm. how do we how do we help people recognize that they've gone to a theater and that's where they are. Uh, let's go to Larry first. He had his hand up and then we'll go to John. Oh, it was just it was like some of it is just so obvious to people who have once been in religion and now aren't, they understand it. But uh, like yesterday, I was talking to somebody on, on, the, uh, on Facebook and he, he literally asked me, well, how, how can you explain uh, that magic doesn't exist and miracles don't exist if it says right in the Bible that Jesus was the son of God? I mean, they don't realize it's just a story. I mean, yeah, can you also say the same thing about Superman and Spider-Man and right. Mother Goose and all this other stuff? Yeah. It's yeah. just a story and a book. Right. John? 
Yeah. Well, what we need here is more fact checking. <laughs> Right. Yes. <laughs> and skepticism. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Bring bring on fact checking. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's a that's a failing in in today's journalism, is uh, that they've scaled back on on fact checking staff. You know, oh. as, uh, you know, and, and maybe it just a change in technology, from you know newsrooms to you know people sitting at their computers and you know, composing their news that way. You know what I mean? Um, there, I mean, there's lots of great sites to, you can go to like Snopes and, and uh, such things too. But, you know, how, how do you get people to, to want to do that? You know, to overcome their uh, willful ignorance, as it were, um, to actually try to discern whether the things they believe are grounded in reality and justified. But here's the, here, I'm going back to the human condition. Uh, mm -hmm. journalism has largely been an arm of marketing and businesses that are trying to attract viewers. And so the major concern for business is to make profit. And the major concern for market is to attract people to eventually buy or sell ads, not yeah. to give journalism. And so mm -hmm. it's a disinterested party in the nature of truth. It is a very much an interested party in the controversy or attracting viewers or keeping people engaged through clicks or views or, or in personalities. And mm. so we've, we ourselves are subject to being these kinds of people who like to see the, the, the yes. spark and the flare and not care about the, the really murky situation that comes yes. with good, honest mm. journalism. And BBC, mm. for example, good example of that, but we don't have a tap on BBC usually in America. We only have like NPR here in the States, which isn't as an exciting thing and doesn't report on the hourly basis. It does the day after and only on the day after for news that's already been around for 24 hours. And it's always told in a very passive tone. And you don't see any of the people with all the blur and the bokeh and the face paint and the, the makeup. It's just very mm -hmm. dry news, but people don't like that. They like the more exciting stuff. Oh, I, I, think right. that's a human, I think that's a human thing. Yeah. Uh, John? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, while Ty was saying all that, I was thinking he was describing the job of journalism, which is to attract an audience and to sell stuff and gather money. It's that should be the job of journalism. That's the job of well, the marketing. They use journalism as a, like, okay. a layer on top of that. It's a cherry on okay. top of a really terrible cake. Yeah. Oh, okay. As the owner of a news channel, <laughs> I, I you're not agree. marketing anything. <laughs> I, I agree with you. No, I'm, I'm not getting any money for it either. Mm. I agree with you because news should merely be a reporting of the facts mm. without any opinions attached to it, without any intention behind it, other than to disseminate the facts. And But while you were saying that, Ty, about how journalism has come to be this tool to influence people, I was thinking, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. <laughs> That's what it is. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's a tool to influence people, to gather an audience, to take money off them. They're not called sheep for nothing. It's because right. they get fleeced. Huh. <laughs> and and right. so uh, what, what, I, what I want to say is that um, it's a shame that humans love narrative. Mm. We love it above actual evidence. You know, the juicier a story is, the more avidly we'll read it. Mm -hmm. And if it's, if it's boringly reported as a bullet point list of facts, it's not interesting. Right. Yeah, I love it. Um, I was going to open it up to uh, Within Reason to see if sure. uh, you had anything to say about that we see your aunt oh hey um hey. so i think peer pressure to stay within that known comfort zone is paramount and huge for people mm. i mean you know i i mean being an atheist is a lonely experience we're out there we don't really have that sense of community or belonging I mean, we're working on it by doing things like this. This is fantastic. Um, but, um, you know, I'm a, I, I feel isolated. <laughs> like, you know, it's, uh, you know, I'm go, trying to go to meetups and get out and socialize. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there, yeah. there comes a point where there's that distinction between us. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I certainly get you as a pastafarian. Um, you know, of course, I, you know, I, I come out in, in a much different way than a typical atheist, uh, especially if I'm walking around town with my tricorn. Um, you know, people kind of say, you believe what? I mean, you believe in a flying spaghetti monster? I mean, come on. Are he you serious? He helps me make putts. He helps and, me make and, putts. You know, and at times I've turned to them and I said, what, you believe a, a God sacrificed himself to himself, uh, you know, because he <laughs> made people flawed, uh, you know. Because yeah, he couldn't think of that? a better reason. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing. And I was talking about, uh, you know, the movies and about stories and the suspension of disbelief. I, as a younger man, I went to film school. And oh. so I learned uh, a great deal about how to make movies. And it actually ruined me for my ability to suspend disbelief in a film. And so I, I can't watch superhero movies anymore be just because I, I, I cannot let go of the fact that the physics doesn't work, uh, you know, um, or, or that kind of a universe it just doesn't bring the same level of entertainment because it doesn't reflect a reality I've become more aware of, I guess. Uh, how do you guys feel about that? Ty? You've got to do that suspension, willing suspension of disbelief as someone was saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want to throw out a couple of things. One, I like the idea that we've uh, clearly defined answers, responses, and explanations. And I also want to throw out another one, claims, because I feel like claims are essentially a bunch of responses more or less that don't necessarily could have weight but are related to the topic at hand but have no evidence to support it or haven't been demonstrated to and the bible is just nothing but a book of claims so that when people say well this verse said this it's like you're just pointing at a claim mm -hmm. there's no evidence there and as john rich is right. really, very, very well point out we love narrative but we don't love evidence and we need to get right. those two swapped around to where we care yeah. about the evidence more well uh, and, I, and just before i turn it over to john here uh mm -hmm. you know the the greatest story about ignorance being bliss is mm -hmm. the garden of eden right yeah mm -hmm. you know th th that was life with god was uh, in total ignorance and it wasn't until they I, ate the tree of knowledge the snake gave advice to a nudist. Yeah, the, the Bible is written from the perspective or from the spin of a complete tyrant. So it sounds yeah. like that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But if you told me that I was raised in a garden, I was like, your job is to name the animals. And I'm like, I see a line of ants. And I'm like, okay, Tim, Alan, Peter, Darius. And I'm doing that for the rest of my eternity. It's like, this is, this is terrible. Please let me eat some fruit off a tree, naked lady. Show me where it is. I'm happily eat it. Yeah. Uh, John, John, you had your hand up. So would I. And Larry yeah. next. <laughs> yeah, well, I just wanted to tell you guys that I've got to go shortly because I'm on, as I said, I'm on taxi duty and they've just rung me or texted me to say <laughs> it's time for me to collect them. But uh -huh. before, before I go, I, I want to make the point that uh, you said when you meet people who mock you for believing in uh, a, a flying spaghetti monster, and then you ask them about the silly things they believe in their Bible. What they're claiming is my fantasy is better than your exactly. fantasy. Exactly. Right, right, Who's right. Who's got the more convincing delusion, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And it's the one you believe in. <laughs> see you. Yeah. See you, John. Thanks. See you, guys. Thanks for coming, John. We'll see you next week. Oh, we'll see you later Bye -bye. today. Yeah. See you, John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Larry, did you There's also a website called God of the Day. Isn't that what it's called? You can look up all the different religions all over the world. And, and every day they what have was a god, it? god of, the of the day god of the day like no, that. Seen it. i like that I, I will check that out larry it gives uh, you a better larry, chance yeah, of getting into the afterlife right yeah. well the thing about no the thing about the garden of eden is we shouldn't lose fat uh sight of the fact that it was punishing us for gaining knowledge yes i yeah. mean we were supposed to stay mm -hmm. in total ignorance but when we decided well let's just say we Shame got knowledge us. we came on it he punished us Mm -hmm. I mean, that and was not, the whole thing behind it. And not just punish, but didn't explain the rules or gave us the capabilities to understand the rules right. first. We, then we, punish us after we right. understood what the rules were. We, it's we like couldn't, uh, it's they couldn't have, down. what is this trap door from paradise? Well, that yeah, yeah. disobedience was wrong until after they ate 
the apple, which gave them the knowledge right. of the difference between. Yeah, that they and couldn't wrong. know they were doing anything wrong before mm -hmm. they had the knowledge. Right. It's of it's a story right. from a tyrannical, right. crazy person that people refuse to recognize for what it is, and that willful ignorance really drives me crazy. I go. also want to throw out one other thing too. The yeah, Bible sure. didn't have to be exciting. Like we said, we like narrative more than evidence. It could have just been God made everything the way it needs to be. The end. It could Bible could have been like one sentence and mm -hmm. it's not. In fact, we have to have floods. We have to have lions being lion pits. There has to be people dying on crosses. There has to be wars because that's yeah. what keeps people engaged. But I think a true yeah. honesty, a true telling of like history or like a true evidential aspect of how things could have happened would have been just very like no it's these mechan mechanics that are were, were set in motion and then you wait 14 billion years and you end up with a planet that looks like this that's basically it it's, yeah you're all the equations you're all the formulas it's as dry and simple as that yeah go ahead larry one thing that the one of my biggest problems with the garden of eden thing is that god is supposed to know everything mm -hmm. and he's supposed to be mm -hmm. everywhere Right. Now, yeah. first of all, he wasn't. Why wasn't he there when God, when humanity needed him the most? Right. I mean, this is the point where he has to punish all of humanity for the rest of time, and he was nowhere to be found. Also, he should have known the outcome before he even made them. If he knew everything, future yep. and past, he knew okay. it was going to happen. So, yep. to me, it just sounds like a big trap. That he was setting a trap, knowing what it's would a trap. happen, and He's we a crazy... fell into the trap, and then he could do what he wanted to. He's an it's evil the... dictator. Of all the gods to worship, it's one of the most <laughs> lame. It's, it's a crazy yeah. god. Like if you mm -hmm. truly like were a Christian, you're like, well, God's so good. It's like you've not read the Bible and paid attention. Like that's mm -hmm. the problem. That's uh, you're fostering an environment where you weren't allowed to be critical on your God. And when I was in college, I loved God. I was all about him, and it wasn't wow. like an ethics class. And I realized that morality isn't what's in the Bible. It's a completely different thing that right. requires explanation wow. from the people. That I was like, the Bible's not moral. Holy, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, these guys aren't moral. The God isn't moral. Whoa, I need to take a step back and rethink this. And that was and when obedience. I read the Bible again from beginning yeah. to end. And I realized this isn't for me. I can't call yeah. myself a Christian. Uh, but well, I'll you, you, started, you started to see the man behind the curtain. I did, mm -hmm. but within reason made a really good point. She said she felt very lonely as an atheist. I say to this, I never felt more lonely as a Christian when I realized that the book that I was reading wasn't speaking to me spiritually. When I felt that disconnect, like when I lost that ignorance of bliss, I realized I feel very lonely as a Christian because now I can't talk to other Christians because right, right. I feel like I'm missing something. I can't talk to this God that I've had a relationship oh, wow. with because I don't feel like we're connecting anymore. And I have no idea what even atheism oh. is, but I just know they're the devil. <laughs> mm -hmm. I felt more right. lonely mm -hmm. in my life. But now right. that I'm fully as an atheist, it's like I when I see someone admit they're an atheist, I don't have scorn for them. I'm like, that guy had almost my same experience or I recognize that person or I respect that person. And I feel like we start on a, a better foundation for connection than we would if I was a Christian meeting another Christian and we were both like, Hey, we friends, but don't, don't, don't hang out with that guy. Cause that guy's a complete jerk. You know, like, I feel like they're atheists get a head start in my book in terms of like knowing them very well. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, again, we have to be careful on the definition of an atheist. An atheist doesn't have sufficient evidence to support a belief mm. or justify belief in God. Hmm. Um, it doesn't mean that one can't be spiritual, can't have a sense that um, there's aspects to the universe we may never be able to, sure. to approach and answer. Um, and certainly that's the case for me as a pastafarian. Um, you know, I don't literally uh, believe that there's a flying spaghetti monster, but it does act as an avatar for those aspects of the universe that I do find completely impenetrably uh, mysterious um, if it makes so you feel better well, i do uh, a quick noodle at the basket whenever i play disc golf right as like an offering to the noodle lord <laughs> and it does help my putts and i can tell you that's all i need it that's all i need need it for so like i'm totally fine with that all you need is sauce. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> I throw the spaghetti out and that's it. Oh, yeah, when I train it. people how to play putt, I say, uh, when you putt, you're supposed to make a pizza in the oven motion. I just say, throw the spaghetti on the wall. That's all you have to do. <laughs> just throw the spaghetti on the wall. And people do it and they make their putts too. So I'm saying there's there's some magic behind there. Um, I was going to ask uh, within reason, 
Um, what, uh, so how long have you identified as an atheist? My parents raised me completely without any um, indoctrination whatsoever. So never. Oh, okay. Um, now, so, I mean, you kind of indicated being alone. Like, is that in the face of mm -hmm. uh, being ensconced in a community of Christians or? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, totally. In a red state um, where I live. However, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I live and I work in two different areas. I'm in a blue municipality, but I'm in a okay. red state where I live. So yeah, same here. Wow. Not it, the same must, here, but tough, I do eh? work in a science environment and that's mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, right. for myself, I, uh, I live in a, in a really small community about, you know, six, maybe 8,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got, you know, probably, 30 churches uh wow you know the largest of them you know, maybe 28 of them being christian so i i can certainly identify with you know how tough it is to sort of come out uh you know with a belief system or lack of belief system that doesn't jive with the the one that's the the sort of uh general one in the community but uh you know i've been at this for six years and uh you know people look forward to my entry in the parade. So uh, we had Canada Today and I drove around in the SS Quab and or the SS Blueberry, I should say, uh, <laughs> which is my, uh, my little blue Audi. And uh, we had a blast and, you know, there were people lining the streets, uh, saluting and going, and give us some pasta and bless us as pasta -ness and all that kind of stuff. So it's actually been kind of fun more recently anyway. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, I, I guess we're coming up on the towards the end of the show here. So uh, just wondered, Ty, uh, where can we find your stuff? You got any? Hey, you last can find posts? myself on YouTube. Feel free to check out Let's Chat on YouTube. I think it's just literally just Let's Chat. And um, feel free to leave a comment. We'll go over them in uh, future episodes of the show. Cool. And um, how about you? Within reason, do you uh, do you have anything going on that you want to plug? Not really. Uh, we do have meetups. Where I went to the East Nashville Brew Works on Trinity Lane, and that's where I met Fabiola a couple of weeks ago, and I'm so looking forward to that again, and hope people in the Nashville area will come out. Perfect. Very cool. Yeah, well, you can find my stuff. I live stream this on, um, on my uh, YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, and so uh, I do that uh, because I'm in Canada on the, on the West Coast. Uh, for me, it's 7 a.m., bright and early, uh, wow. Pacific Daylight Time. So uh, you can find my stuff there. And if you like it, subscribe and put up the notification bell, and you'll know when new stuff comes on. I also do the Global Atheist News Review uh, at 11 a.m. PDT on Sundays as well. And uh, how about you, found? Larry? Uh, what was within reason going to say? Go ahead. I just asked, where is that Global Atheist Review? Uh, it's on YouTube. Yeah, so Thank yeah, you. just type in. It's under uh, Free Thought Productions. And that's the okay. one that uh, John Richards, uh, he's the host for that one. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, Atheist Songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, you... You can go to also my YouTube channel, which can be found by searching for Larry Rhodes, Doubter 5, or Digital Free Thought, either one. And I have a book on Amazon called Atheism, What's It All About? If you're curious, that's a very good place to start. By the way, if you're a member of the clergy, but you have come to see that claims of religion are not justified, and you're losing your faith, but don't know where to go in for help, well, there's the clergy project. These these, this project actually will help people who are still um, practicing their, their pulpit um, preaching, as it were. Uh, just go to clergyproject.org, and they'll help you through the transition. You can find this show on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and Podcasts Everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Thanks for joining us. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. 
And also remember that everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.